topics that we knew everyone was interested in. Um, but this time we decided to just really connect over like questions you guys have had and been asking. So you want to just dive into the first question? I think so, yeah. Let's just um, so really what we wanted to talk about, like sh like Kara was saying, it's just like a mini Q&A session. Um, we know a lot of questions are out there constantly in the blogging world and it's kind of hard, one, to keep up with what everyone's even asking and you're like, wait, should I know this? Should I not know this? <laughs> Is this it important? Matter, yeah. yeah, like <laughs> what's going on? So we just wanted to bring to light some of those really basic ones to help you guys have a better direction of um, just some of those things that you're constantly questioning. I guess that's not like really roundabout, but <laughs> you know what I'm getting yeah. at. Yeah, just because it's not always Googleable and people Googleable. Googleable. You just made that up. Yeah, but it sounds real. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. But seriously, as a blogger, you can't just always type in your questions and get like a straight answer. You either have to like sift through ten blog posts. And then hopefully, like, eventually find your way, maybe through, like, pages and pages of pins, you finally find someone's article. So we're trying to be a little more, help you get access to their information earlier in your blogging career. So you don't have to, like, play hide-and-go-seek with the internet, which is no fun. <laughs> so one of the main things um, that we thought was really important, because it's something that we've also consistently, I mean, everything's always changing. And that's, like, what we talked about in the past two live sessions can be a huge benefit and a huge um, negative mm -hmm. because you're constantly having to learn all the time and then you're constantly having to keep up with what's like changing. Like relearn. Like as soon as you figure it out, it's like totally different. Yeah. <laughs> and like Miss IT, like she has a little bit easier access <laughs> to like learning things. It can take me forever to learn something and then all of a sudden I've learned it and I'm like, yay, I'm the master and then something <laughs> new is out and I'm like, what in the right. hell do I even do? So one of the things we wanted to bring to light is the three, at least in our eyes, the three must-have um, apps for your phone that are free at cost. So obviously most free apps end up having like add-ons where you, you can pay for the creates. membership. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes a huge difference because you obviously get way more with a lot of those. But these three apps, the free versions of them, we I still use the free version of one of them. Yeah. Um, and so does Kara, I believe, uh -huh. and then the one other one that we pay for, and we can tell you why we pay for them. Yeah. So the first app we wanted to talk about is, I think it's pronounced Planoly. Yeah. Right? Planoly. Um, That's how we say it, at least. P-L-A-N-O-L-Y, so Planoly. And that's basically like if anyone's ever heard of like Hootsuite or Tailwind or anything mm -hmm. along those lines. It's very like similar later, to that. Is yeah. Another common one for Instagram. Which one? Yeah. Later. Later. Yeah. yeah. See, I don't know if I've heard that one. No. Yeah. See, this is why we're doing this. <laughs> um, but basically, it's just to help you plan out your Instagram. And Planoly is actually specific to Instagram. So it's not Facebook and Pinterest and Twitter and all the ones into one. Like, I think Hootsuite is more of generally all of them minus Instagram. Yeah. The reason um, Hootsuite and Planoly um, go to Instagram and the reason Hootsuite doesn't is because Hootsuite actually posts on your behalf. So it'll just shoot posts out when you have them planned to Pinterest or um, Facebook or Twitter or, mm -hmm. or whatnot, you, which is a great app too. I'm not talking against Hootsuite. We're, we're it's actually just different. Use it for different reasons. Yes. Yeah. And we're actually looking into potentially using that one as well for other things. But yeah. besides the point, point Planoly <laughs> is just Instagram and the reason it's just Instagram is because you can schedule everything out and you can basically see your feed on the phone which being someone who's not IT um, <laughs> it's super user friendly like it's as easy as you can get you upload the picture you can mess with the caption um, upload your hashtags into it which is kind of nice because it can tell you so you don't have to count every single one like I used to be doing in my yeah. notes which I'm sure a lot of you do uh -huh. um, it just counts them for you and you can still tag as if you're sitting in Instagram so it picks up everyone's accounts yeah. so um, when you're using hashtags it like tells you how many you have left like as you type them it says like 28 left or something to go yeah. like um, and then you can actually save like hashtag groups so like we have like a group of like blogger hashtags or like girl boss hashtags, but like whereas before I had like my beauty hashtags, my like certain ones I liked using like all in my notes and I would just go copy and paste. But with Planoly, it lets you actually save hashtag groups and then when you're writing your caption, you just like throw them in there and it is so much easier. <laughs> Super easy. Um, so that was kind of the main one we wanted to talk about. We use that because, like we said, we have. Kara's doing her blog, I'm doing my blog, and then we're obviously running the social media, obviously, for My Hope Society. There's a lot going on. Yeah, <laughs> lots of social media. 
Um, the benefit from that is we actually upgraded and did pay for it. And this is the one I wanted to tell you that we did pay for. The reason being is because then we could toggle between the multiple accounts that we had. Um, so I definitely, I have access to Never Skip Crunch. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, you I'm see. not looking at it, I'm not posting on it, whatever. But you, we're able to, if all of a sudden I needed to take over her account for some reason, I could, and that's yeah. kind of the benefit of having a team and working in multiple businesses as one. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to kind of um, just interface through all assets of it right at once. Yeah. Um, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, well, the other thing I love about it is that it has a desktop version. So, oh, like, yeah. you that's can literally huge. Yeah, upload huge. pictures right from your desktop onto your app and play it on your feed. So you're not having to, like, email them to yourself or, like, put them in a Dropbox and then download them to your phone. Um, which is really helpful if you like edit your own pictures on your computer with like Lightroom or any other kind of apps. Um, and then, oh, the other thing is, so it basically reminds you to post to Instagram. You like do all your caption, all your hashtags, and then you can like schedule it and it gives you like a notification on your phone telling you to post. And the reason for that is like Instagram doesn't allow any third party apps to post on your behalf. So it pretty much has to just remind you and then it copies the caption for you and you hit like copy to Instagram and it opens up Instagram for you, your picture's there, and then you go through the regular process of like putting your caption in, tagging everyone, posting, all that kind of stuff. And then with like Hootsuite and all those other ones we were talking about, um, the reason they're different is because they do post on your behalf because Facebook and Twitter allow you to have that app. Um, you can schedule your post to go up and it literally, that's all you have to do, it just goes up at a certain time. But So yeah. really nice, but, yeah, yeah, I think those are huge <laughs> additives. Um, and so that's the one that you can definitely get that for free, have a lot, like you have a, with the free version, you only have a certain amount of pictures that you can upload every single month. Mm -hmm. Um, but being, it's, it's perfect. Basically what we're trying to do roundabout way of explaining this <laughs> is tell you the basic apps for new, newer bloggers that are just kind of getting their way into actually planning things instead of just shooting things out into Instagram. Yeah. Um, which we've both just started to try and get really good at. We're not planners. No. Um, so it's, it's been hard, but that's been one of the easiest ways is by us just actually having apps that are super easy to access and yeah. get to Instagram or get to whatever it is. So to help you like not only just plan your content, but give your feed like a cohesive look so that you're not just word, yes. throwing up cohesive. posts. It kind of like seems like it fits together and yeah, the next one. So, um, so off of that, that's the one that we have paid for. Um, I'm going to let Kara actually take this one away. She's huge into the color story app, yeah. um, or a color story. Yeah. It's called a color story. Yeah. Um, and essentially it's like a simpler version of Lightroom. So like, say you take a picture inside and it looks really yellow. You can take it into a color story and you can like adjust like the yellow blue dial to make it look more blue and more balanced. You can also like brighten your pictures, add like clarity and contrast. Um, pretty much everything you can do in Lightroom. And there's a lot of apps that do this, but I think color story is just really easy, really intuitive and it does it really well. It also has like some fun features if you want to mess around with like adding like sun flares or like different filters, which I don't necessarily use. I just like it for like when I take a phone picture and it's not as like bright as I want it to be or the colors are a little off. It's just a really simple way to like quickly fix it. Um, and then it fits into your feed better. Like if you have a more golden looking feed with like more sunshiny pictures that's kind of more yellow, you can adjust any picture so it like fits within your feed and it's not necessarily just a filter because filters can do a lot of other weird things like make your skin look weird or like darken or lighten too much. So this kind of just helps you change the hue is kind of my favorite use for it, I think. And it is also free. I don't, I think there's like paid filters, but I haven't even explored that. But I mean, go ham if like you're interested in filters. Which tells you a lot about the free version though to like, she's obviously a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. She's huge in how she edits things. And so if she hasn't even explored having to dial in to paying for anything, yeah. I think that's a huge plus plus yeah. yeah, coming from her that she's just been able to use the free version yeah. um, and it's worked really nice. Yeah. So. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then on to my camera version that I'm using, um, I'm sure most of you have known or heard of it, but like Visco cam, I realized talking to a few bloggers that they didn't even really know how far and how much you can do with that app. So with Visco cam right now, I'm currently trying to get into, as I've spoke to a little bit on my host society, but if you follow me getting more into like the artistic 
version of pictures. I like to be artsy. I like to be inspirational. I actually like more of the yellow tone and like that more vintage look, which mm-hmm. is like the biggest opposite yeah, of Tara I like and I. Mine, like cold and <laughs> clear blue, super and, airy and yeah. white, and like, uh-huh. and I like it super like artsy, a little bit darker, more vintage look. And with Visco, I was always using a filter on Instagram, which worked great when I was basically just kind of being new to everything and trying to get more of a Kara said a cohesive look Mm -hmm. to my feed, but Visco was able to help me in a free way. I have not paid for anything on Visco. Help me get a way more cohesive look onto my Instagram, and it's really helped me move into a direction of figuring out how I want to do things and why I want to do them, Mm -hmm. and then kind of keep more of that artistic look I'm going for. And um, to be honest with you guys, I am now looking into buying Lightroom and buying some of the, um, what do they call them? Like the Photoshop Lightroom bundle? Yeah, the presets. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was like looking for a word. I like, eh. I go, eh. <laughs> um, I'm looking into buying some of the presets because I am taking it to that next level. But I've been using Visco at least for the past few months um, and have really been able to get my feed to looking to how I think I want it to look for, which has made me feel way more confident into actually purchasing a photo editing tool that I know I'm going to use because it's not just me purchasing off of a whim thinking, oh, this is what I want to do. And a month later, all of a sudden changing it because Instagram changes so much and you're like, wait, I hate that now. So now I've realized, okay, I really do like this and actually how I want to enhance it deeper into why I want to buy something. So Visco is a great app. It's free. There's a ton of free presets that come with it and you can mess with so much more than you can mess with on Instagram on a user basis. Um, Mm -hmm. And being a non-IT person, it's super (laughs) easy to get to know what to do. It's still the saturation. It's still sharpness. It's still all those things that the word and verbiage that we know on Instagram on a basic level. Yeah. Um, So it's still all of that. So it just kind of takes your pictures to the next level and helps you plan out more. And um, one of the nice things, I'll be done talking about this though, but (laughs) the nicest thing I've realized that I think you can probably use in a lot of other things like Lightroom, but on a basic level is you can copy any of the edits from one of the pictures you've done and then paste that edit exactly to every other single picture and then you can just kind of move things around a little bit. So it's, and again, helps me get everything looking the same exact way without having to guess, how did I edit this? Was this that sharp? Was it this? Was it that? Just being able to paste it and then mess with it depending on the darkness and lightness of that photo. (laughs) Yeah. So let's talk about- Long-winded, but (laughs) this goes awesome. Let's talk about like some tips for a cohesive feed before. Yeah, that's a really good next thing to do. That's a really big question Mm -hmm. with bloggers just starting out. Um, I guess some of the main things are first to think about like lightness and darkness. When you have every other photo or like random photos that are like different lightness or different darkness, like some are really light, some are really dark, it tends to look like really clustered instead of very cohesive. So the first thing you want to look at is like making sure all your pictures are kind of the same brightness. Like if you want to have like a dark moody feed, like make sure all your pictures follow that. If you want to have like a light airy feed, same with same thing. Um, The second thing is probably like colors. So this could be maybe the hue of your photo overall. Like if you like the yellower vintage tone or if you like kind of more of a blue like cold tone. Um, But it also can be like the pictures with or the colors within your photo. So like a color story is kind of based on the idea that you're gonna have like the same pop of color and you're like telling a story with your color so like maybe around Christmas you have a lot of like reds and greens like pops of red pops of greens and then you kind of transition into like maybe blues for like winter but just making sure like pictures within the same area kind of tell a color story with the pops of color that are coming out um, and that it's not just like kind of random and ours We have like a lot of lavender, obviously, like our color story is clearly like purple and then black and white. So if you, there's like a lot of feeds where you can just immediately when you land on their page, you know, like the color story they're telling because they have like their favorite color is in every picture or there's like pink handbags and then pink heels and then pink whatever, which is like what mine was for a while. But it was. Yeah, it was. But going off of that, I think that's huge because like we've even today, we were messing around. We obviously like to do a lot of reposts as most of you guys know. Um, And one of the biggest reposts we do is of our members because we love them and they bring so much to our community, obviously. Mm -hmm. But picking the pictures, we are super picky about them and, and how they look because we don't want it to be a certain thing and then all of a sudden like a pop of red. We had yeah. an instance today where we loved the picture of the blogger, but it just didn't fit, fit into <laughs> our thing, unfortunately. 
So really thinking that and taking that onto your own Instagram would be a huge asset. I know it can be hard to think about because Instagram's just weird. I think it's figuring out if you want to be the person that plans your posts or if you want to be the person that's doing your OOTD every day. And that makes a huge difference. But some of the big bloggers that are doing their OOTDs every day are still planning those out, even though it might not seem like that. Yeah. And so I was even on that kick for a little bit where I was like, I want to be the girl on the whim because it's every day and this is who I am and that's just what I'm bringing to the blog. But uh -huh. realizing that I didn't always blow the best way, I was under so much stress trying to get the picture done and that there can't, you can still have a plan to fit that into feeling very every day, even though if you wore it Tuesday instead of Thursday when you actually posted it, if right. that makes sense. And then you can also allow yourself space to go on a whim. Like say you have... A really good filter you kind of know like your pictures need to be you know light and airy like you can take a random picture and then put it in your feed and do it on a whim but because you have kind of like a set plan for like making your feed cohesive it doesn't feel like a whim you're not just randomly like out at happy hour taking like a really dark picture at the bar and throwing it up because like it was what you were doing right then like so that's another thing is like don't Having a plan doesn't mean you're, like, stuck to the plan and you can't be, like, spontaneous or authentic if you're, like, really feeling it in the moment. Because if you know us, that's all we are. Like, I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm all planned out. Yeah. And then I'm going to go to a wedding in November and I know I'm going to be like, Kirby, take a picture of me right now. Because I want to do this right now. And yeah. the good thing, though, about having the apps that we talked about is that you'll be able to easily start to kind of get a flow to things. So even if you uh -huh. do take something on a whim and it's super wonky or dark or whatever it is, you can still go back to that even if it's not exactly yeah. the perfect thing, you can still Make transfer fit. back to yeah. yeah, fitting. And that's how you start to get to a point of like planning your post out and getting a more cohesive feed. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Like I literally have thought about it for weeks and weeks and weeks. And finally, after following a ton of the bloggers that I realized I really liked and really connected to, I realized what I was kind of going for, downloaded Visco, and then it was just like slowly but surely kind of tailoring my feed into what I is now. And mm -hmm. I still, like I said, and looking to now purchase something to get it even more extravagant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Uh, oh, the other thing. So not even just like the hue, color, and brightness of your picture. I don't know how familiar people are with like terms of photography, but like your brightness and your color. Um, the other thing that goes into like a cohesive feed is like the zoom on your shots, if that makes sense. So like detail shots versus like full body shots versus like, are you far away? Are you close in? Like having a good balance of those. Um, there's some people that take like only full body outfit pictures. There's other people that take only mirror selfies or only like bracelet pictures. And then there's obviously like a ton of people that balance all of that together. But um, like paying attention to whether you're stacking like a full body picture on top of another one and it, like that could throw your feet off, make it look a little weird or like if you have too many detail shots and then you transition into like just a ton of outfit pictures. So thinking of like balance in terms of like the focus of your shot is another really good thing to keep in mind. I'm just like snapping stories over here on <laughs> multiple IG accounts. Um, but we're live. <laughs> so going off of that, um, like Kara was saying, it's just being really in tune with what you want to give to your followers on a picture basis because obviously it's all about working on your website and I think that's what a lot of people have lost sight of with this whole Instagram run I guess you could say right now like Instagram <laughs> just huge and everyone's trying to start a blog and everyone's trying to do this but everyone's losing sight of the fact that a lot of the people that are huge on Instagram are huge on their website and they've taken a lot of time to do that so just kind of learning how to get that through images and use Instagram I learned it from some webinar I went into, but basically like Instagram is like your advertisement. It's yeah. your magazine to your website. Right. So Instagram is not the end all be all. That's not the only reason brands should be reaching out to you. They should be reaching out to you solely because of your website and then obviously what you output there. But you really need to think of this as just the first thing people are seeing about your brand. Like your handshake versus your like oh god like a bad full. handshake oh my god yeah. I remember it so like much when they just like limp uh, or like, or when they just give you like the tips of their fingers and you're like, like but what? it's a hand you have a whole shape. hand there handshake <laughs> so yeah that's a really good thing yeah that's a really good but way it thing. is it's like a first impression and if you think about it like Instagram changes so much like they're changing their algorithm every other day because at the end of the day like they are a business and they are doing what they're doing to make money 
and you can't blame them. Like, like they, all of us. Yeah, they've made an amazing platform. But the other thing to think about is like you don't own your platform on Instagram. Like they can change whatever they want, whenever they want, pretty much. And so, so well, like, we're all dealing with the algorithm. Yeah, obviously going back to that. So like to to depend on Instagram to be like your blog and your influence and like to have your influence solely be on social media is really dangerous because it could be there one day and gone the next because the algorithm could change again and they could like they could say you have to pay for anyone to see your post which like they probably wouldn't but they could is the point so having like a really strong blog and having your own platform that you can sell yourself on to back it up is like so important um and along with that like people kind of think like oh my page views are terrible or whatever um really the important thing about that is like think about having a newsletter like that's how you reach people it's not necessarily them coming to your blog and seeing your content which they still will but like your real influence is getting into people's inbox and so like selling a company on like hey uh, we'll do this collaboration and then i'll feature you in my newsletter that's literally going to people's email which they probably give preference to over like i don't know notifications or other impressions on instagram or something and again with bringing the pictures back into that that's a huge thing if you think of a newsletter and you fit two to three to four pictures on there you want those pictures to all match in some way and all look the same so when you're actually reaching out to those people those 50 people or you only have 10 people on your email list and you send it out to 10 people you want it to look so cohesive that it triggers them to want to go look at more on your blog because they connected with it instead of here's a picture that looks like this, here's a picture that looks like this, and you don't even really know what you have going on on your own blog. Yeah. So that's a huge thing, I think, with pictures as well, is that it speaks louder than you think in in so many other aspects of the blog. Yeah, it just really illustrates your brand, like, in a way that words can't. Like, if you look at someone's Instagram and it's very, like, cohesive, like, you can kind of tell what they're about, and they don't have to say anything, and that's, like, the benefit of, like, pictures and having them all like having a a look or like an aesthetic that you've like picked for your brand so yeah yeah and one last thing we want to touch on because like we said it's gonna be quick and it's already 5 30 I realized (laughs) um but the one thing we wanted to talk about is the pros and cons to hiring a photographer which is going into this we really just want to talk about pictures because that's what all of Instagram is about but we're not we don't have different views on it um we're just different on how we do things Uh obviously Kara like I said is a professional photographer so she does her pictures so different than I do yeah um my husband Kirby has dubbed himself a professional photographer (laughs) um and he he definitely (laughs) like is close to that point I mean he takes angles that I would not even think of anymore but aside from that we do different things differently I'm not at the point right now where I feel comfortable spending hundreds of dollars a month on a photographer we don't have that in our finances and I'm not making enough from the blog to do that Um, obviously if I start rolling in thousands of dollars a month maybe I'll go do start doing some photography sessions but Mm -hmm. as of right now buying a really nice camera and taking the time myself because I'm into photography to edit them myself and have Kirby, who's now learned the angles, as I said, <laughs> do that on his self has saved us a ton of time, a ton of money. I don't have to sit here scheduling. I don't have to send fees to photographers. Mm-hmm. All of that that goes into that. Because a lot of bloggers, I think, get lost in the fact that you obviously want a good feed. And I'm not saying don't do it. Um, because that can speak very loudly on an Instagram if you have yeah. a really professional photography feed. But with how saturated the market is in my own opinion a lot of women end up thinking that that's what's going to make it big for them right they have good pictures i'm going to be huge on instagram every brand's going to want to work with me and that is so far from the truth it's not even funny yeah because the market is so saturated everyone's hiring photographers everyone can get a good picture everyone can have an airy white whatever it is that sells to those brands the like blurry background yes or like everyone can do that and so I think you, if that's what works for you, do that. But a ton of bloggers are thinking that's the only way and spending hundreds to thousands of dollars and going in debt because they think this is, and we could go on this conversation <laughs> sidebar forever. Yeah. <laughs> but for f- photography wise, if you can make it work without a photographer and you're not pulling in one cent for your blog, I would highly suggest stepping away from hiring a photographer and either one reaching out to a photographer that doesn't want to charge because they're trying to get exposure and collaborate in that sense then you're doing it together like you're both working your way up 
at the same time, and like Which that collaboration huge. makes sense. For and you could end up having a lifelong relationship because you've started together, and then if you both get huge, you continue to work together on that basis. Yeah. Or doing the research into the apps that are going to take your picture from if it's on an iPhone, if it's on an, a semi-nice camera, if it's on whatever it is, or even just a nice camera but you don't know how to edit stuff. Yeah. If you get those other apps and step away from using the Instagram filters, your pictures can look so professional, you will shock yourself they on can. how well you can look. Like, honestly, the key to photography, I'm going to tell you the secret sauce, is secret focus sauce. and lighting. Like, as lighting long as your is photo huge. is in focus huge. and your lighting is good, like... That's pretty much the first step. Obviously, there's other things like frame and, like, the right angle. But, like, that stuff just comes with, like, your aesthetic of your brand. Like, there's no right way to do that. But, like, being in focus and having good lighting, like, there's tried and true methods. Um, photography resources. So there's this really good series on YouTube by SLR Lounge, which is this guy named Pi who is, like, a wedding photographer that's established this, like, photography course and they have like a whole paid membership paid courses but he has like a photography 101 like playlist on youtube that's like a series and it's like quite a few videos maybe like 10 probably more but it's amazing it's literally amazing and like just sit down and watch that and you will pretty much be a professional photographer by the end um but, but yeah. that speaks so true coming from someone who is a professional yeah. photographer. Like, like I'm, I'm a photographer telling you you don't have to hire a photographer. Like, I'm speaking on your levels because, like, obviously, yeah, maybe I've been in the game a few more years than you, or maybe I haven't. Either way, I'm coming from your guys' level. I'm not a professional photographer. I We dub ourselves as the olden camps to be because <laughs> we take so many pictures, yeah. but we're not. And when I see what Kara's doing on her level and she's doing all these different things and has the lighting and everything, it's totally different. <laughs> But to her point, if you just sit down and really try and suck in some information, it can be a huge asset to taking your pictures to the next level instead of just being stuck in what so many bloggers are doing and just being on Instagram or just being on your iPhone or whatever the apps like or the random editing you can do through your iPhone. Yeah. Um, if you really start to hone in and start to play around with some of the the apps that are free you can get professional photography 100% free, Yeah. not bust your budget, not <laughs> bust your butt at trying to schedule them, and not even having to reach out to try and collaborate with any photographers. Mm -hmm. You can just start from scratch and do this on your own, which in the long term, if you're going to try and be a big time blogger, like both Kara and I are still in the midst of trying to do that, I'm even learning, like, you need to learn every step of everything. Just because yeah. I don't like IT doesn't mean I can just sit back and not know something about IT. Like, no. probably will never be on Kara's level because <laughs> I don't like to nerd out like that. I nerd out on many other things. Yeah. <laughs> but That's why we're a good pair. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're the perfect pair because there's things she doesn't want to pick up. But at the end of the day, I'm telling her, you know, you need to learn this, this, and this because that, if you want to be this type of person – you can't just be the IT section of it or know how blogging works. You need to be this, this, and this. Yeah. And it's the same vice versa. So just picking that up, going into photography, I think is huge because you just need to take every aspect of blogging into it. You can't just assume that just because you're hiring a photographer, it's going to work because that's just not how it works anymore. Yeah. And then the other thing, so like, let's say you're making decent money and you're ready to hire a photographer. Like, how do you know how to go about that? I would say like, First of all, you can have a balance of like having one shoot a month where like you work with a photographer on your paid collabs, but then like on stuff you're doing just for yourself, you don't necessarily have to hire one. Like it doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, True. And then like really digging into like asking for a resume, like asking for their shoot style and kind of like what do they shoot? What's their normal? Like are they a portrait photographer? Are they like a landscape photographer? Which is probably not going to be what you want. Unless you're shooting pictures of you on top of mountains, which, like, but go, go all out. Go <laughs> get it. But, like, really reviewing their work and making sure it's, like, a good fit for, like, your aesthetic of your blog. Because not everyone's created equal. And also, like, pairing up with photographers that are just starting out, like, can be so beneficial to both of you. I know, like, when I went to New York Fashion Week, I didn't have my husband to take all my pictures. Which really consists of, like, him taking them and me editing. So I, like, <laughs> call him, um like a husband tripod behind his back. Oh my god, that's but it, funny. But it is. He thinks it's Sorry, all him, and that's totally fine. Like, I'm going to let him have it, so he keeps doing it. But, actually, he's pretty good. He does good angles. He's but good. But editing... I mean, it's like Kirby. Like, I edit all of them, but he takes all that's of them. That's true. Which is great. Like, maybe find a friend or a yeah. boyfriend or whatever. But, I think but also, like, connecting on Craigslist. Because, like, 
Oh, that's a good, yeah, yeah, that's a good option. Because honestly, I reached out on Craigslist when I went to New York Fashion Week to find people that were willing to just like come to the show with me in exchange for photos, and there were some really amazing up and coming photographers that had like great work that were literally just wanted to get in a show and. The same can be said for exposure, like to just give them, you know, photo credit on your blog or in your Instagram posts. Like a lot of people that are trying to build a portfolio to get paid to do it, like you can help them out by using your influence and partnering up with them. So, and I think um, another thing on top of that is like when they're new photographers, just like when you're like a new blogger, you are wanting to put in 10 times more the work because you really want to yeah. get whatever exposure you do get, you want it to be 100% authentic and your best work. Yeah. So some of the people that you might not pay for and might seem like, okay, well, are they going to give me the best editing or they're not the most popular, whatever it is, they actually might do better work than the people who are popular because they're going to be solely focusing on you yeah. and wanting to get the best shot and the best exposure they can get. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like Kirby and I did that a lot for our wedding. Um, I mean, our photographer, she was well established, but for the videographer, he wasn't as established and we ended up choosing him because we didn't have the budget and his videos spoke to me. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, our video was amazing. He took so <laughs> much time editing it and creating it because it was this huge thing to him that that can speak a lot to reaching out to the smaller people because they want to put in 10 times the effort, not saying the big people don't, but it's just a different mindset. It's just a so. different level of passion when you're like literally doing it for free and trying to build up a portfolio to like make it your career than when it's already your career and obviously mm -hmm. you have so many requests, like you're saying no to a lot of people. So yeah, it's just a different level. And the other thing is like, don't make the mistake of just like scrolling through a photographer's Instagram and being like, they don't fit my aesthetic. Like email them a picture of what you like or a few pictures and be like, hey, do you have any photos that are like along this style? Because a lot of photographers just starting out, they can do a lot of different styles. They haven't really established an aesthetic that they only do because they're taking on all kinds of work, all kinds of clients to build their portfolio so they have like a range of things so That's just because point. it's not on their online portfolio or Instagram doesn't mean they're not like amazing at it so like definitely reach out and talk one-on-one -on -one with them for sure yeah yeah so that was all we kind of want to talk about today was Instagram feed we've already gone over on time like per usual but <laughs> um if you have any questions obviously keep them coming in we are always on our phones DMing Instagram emails yeah. whatever it is comments even if you just comment on a picture with a question um, a lot of our live sessions are being made to put onto our blog. Um, so that's something that only members... No, everyone can see Everyone it. can see the live ones. Yeah, it's myhoodsociety.com slash replay has all our live replays. And they're, they're also on YouTube if you want to, like, subscribe. And then we also did a podcast today. We did our first one. Woo! -woo. We were super nervous, but it was kind of funny. Just like I feel like we we realize we do better at live because we just feel like we, we can't can overthink it. We just yeah. have to be honest in ourselves in the podcast. Like yeah. the fact that we could erase it and redo it. We're like, wait, should we redo it? Like we're like good? both procrastinating perfectionists, and it's just like really funny to see that because we don't plan, we don't do any different things. But when it comes to something like that, we get we super want like, it to OCD. Be perfect. Yeah, like, we about should have it. prepared. But um, it was really good. We tried to keep it as real as we could, so it didn't sound like it was scripted because it wasn't we only would write down like a bullet point to kind of remember to tell you guys so we do have a podcast going live um within Any the next time. few days it might already be up might already be up itunes like takes a while so we've published it but we like, try to see, like figure out the timing it takes yeah. for it but it's on itunes just search my hope society or blogged you can just or blogged. blogged yeah that's that's the name of the podcast so cute. which we think is so cute <laughs> and um all of our live videos are going on to that as well right yeah so we'll have like the audio of the live stream goes right onto the podcast so if you want to just listen and not look at our beautiful faces I guess you can do that <laughs> or if you've missed it and you have work tomorrow or something listen to us on your lunch break um, yeah we have already two other lives on there this live will be on there so that's three and then we just like we said publish the podcast whether it's on there tonight or tomorrow morning coming soon <laughs> um so yeah there's a lot of things to listen to we've talked about so far engagement on the first one, we've talked about the algorithm being super crazy. We've talked about pictures. And then our podcast was basically giving you a big introduction to My Hope Society as and well as the backstory of both of us. Yeah. So we are so excited you guys keep tuning in. We're really excited um, that 
everything is going so well with the community. It seems like everyone's, you know, being friends with everyone and Mm -hmm. really there to support one another, which is the hugest thing for us. Um, I think we only have like one or two. We have one free spot. We'll find a free spot, you guys. So that you can go to myhotsociety.com slash join and one person gets to join for free and the rest of you only have to pay $8 $8 a month, which is, which is like less than a Chipotle burrito of guac, or less than a cheap bottle of wine, and less than like beer for like one talk now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which I will still drink sometimes Definitely. on a budget. Yeah, um, and then yeah, less than a dozen donuts at Dunkin', probably. Yeah, um, and less than a Jimmy John sandwich. Ooh, we haven't yeah. said that one yet. That's Jimmy John's one. is bomb. Less than a pizza for the most part. Yeah, you could get like four boxes of mac and cheese probably for that. So yeah, totally. you have so much food you can eat; it's not even funny. Seriously. So one <laughs> spot left. Whoever wants to take it, get it quick. Go do and it. And then we will be continually um, feeding you guys with more information. But any other questions you ever have, or anything you want to see that you're not seeing, or workbooks or whatever, we are way open to to accommodating you guys, especially with how amazing this community has been so far. Yeah. So. We appreciate everything. We're going to sign off now because my husband needs to get to softball. <laughs> and I need some more wine. So. <laughs> and she's just going to be drinking over here. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, but we will also, oh, another thing. If you've missed this live, which you wouldn't know because you've missed it. <laughs> but tell your friends. We're going to post this on. Um, it'll be available for the next 24 hours in our stories. And then on the website after. So. And the podcast. Yeah. So much. So much.